Hey guys, even here, and in today's video we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates. The first one is of Nathan Diasha, only a couple of hours tops away from the pre-judging of the Italy Pro or the Flex Pro. As you can see, Nathan put a final tan on. So while I'm waiting for the live stream to start, I wanted to make another video right before the show. So once again, Nathan Diasha right here hours away from the stage. What does he look like right now? Well, as you can see in the caption, he says no pump. So he still didn't start pumping up, but as you can see, he looks very full, very round, very full. As far as conditioning, I think it's good enough. I wouldn't say this conditioning looks uh, mind-blowing, I wouldn't say that he is insanely ripped, but I think he's conditioned enough, and with Nathan, I think he also does look a little bit better when he is on the fuller side. For example, I'm a huge fan of what he brought to the 2018 New York Pro, where he won, and it wasn't his best condition, but he was freaking full as a house. And it's not like his body fat percent was not low enough, it was low. He just carved up so heavily, I guess, that he was so blasting full and he looked insane, he looked super big. When Nathan is flat, let's say on the flatter side, he does look kind of smaller, I'm not saying he's small, he's also very big, very full and round, he has that bubbly round, really round look, but when he's flatter, it doesn't look as good. His structure is also like not the widest, not the biggest, so he needs to be super full to look his best in my opinion. And so I'm pretty sure he's gonna have good fullness at this show. As far as conditioning, let's wait to see him on the stage, under the stage lights. I mean, this is just backstage, you can't really gather much information from the backstage photos, they're usually inaccurate, but you can get the idea, like he's in good condition, he's very full, he looks great. Now, we also got a physique update from Behrouz Tabani, 5 hours ago and also 1 hour ago. So, as you can see, he, I think he is gonna be a little bit more crispy. Uh, it's different lighting, again, it's, it's really hard to tell. Here is him also doing the tan, the final coat, I guess. And uh, I think he does look a little bit drier. And Becros has crazy wide shoulders, he has that big structure, he's definitely a big, big bodybuilder. Yeah, his legs are not the best, but Nathan's legs are also not crazy massive, so I think this comparison is gonna be very, very good, it's gonna be very close between these two guys. Right now, from what I'm seeing, I would rather bet on Behrouz Tabani. In my last video, I had Nathan Diasha, now I'm thinking more Behrouz Tabani, but I really have no idea. I mean, uh, we're gonna see it on stage, but as you can see, Behrouz looks phenomenal. He definitely is bringing good conditioning, he dried out completely for this show, and he's also full, he looks great, so it's gonna be a really, really good comparison. And one of the Instagram pages, Bodybuilding Nutella, made a good comparison, so we can get a pretty good idea of what these two guys are gonna look like on stage so let's check it out they already did a scoring but don't pay attention to that we're gonna do the scoring ourselves the lighting is off this is just for fun purposes front double bicep i do have backwards the money i agree with this score right here Front lat spread, because of Nathan's structure, I would give it to Behrouz as well. Let's slow this video down a little bit, so as you can see, like, the legs, there isn't really big of a difference. And from the side, you could even argue that Behrouz's legs are looking better. I mean, the glutes are definitely more separated, the hamstrings are, are hanging lower, and overall, Behrouz knows how to come in super crispy. And I think in this show, both of these guys are gonna be on. I mean, they're both coached by great coaches. Nathan has Stefan Kintzel in his corner, and Behrouz has Milo Sharchev. From behind, the back double, I think I would have to go with Behrouz Dabani, because I really like his back double. Like, with that small waist, with super separated glutes and hamstrings, and simply the shoulder-to-waist-to-legs ratio, crazy X-frame. I love it. I mean, I have to go with him here. So that's all we got in that little video, it's not all the poses, but there is also this physique update of Nathan from last night, this is a day before the show, and I think he was maybe holding a little bit of water the day before the show, which is perfect, basically he dried out during the night time, and I think on the stage he's gonna be drier than this year, even though here the lighting is good, you can get an idea what his physique looks like, I think he's gonna be a little bit drier on the stage. And honestly, it would kind of feel weird if Nathan lost, because lately Stefan Kinzel has been killing it with his guys. 
and now we have two competitors very close one to another and Stefan is coaching one of them so based on Stefan's record lately you know I guess you can say that Nathan has bigger chances but I think it's gonna be a close battle right now from what I saw I do have Becker's body, but I could be wrong. It's going to be very, very close in my opinion. What do you guys think? Tell me down below and stay tuned because in a couple of hours, maybe less, I'm going to post a video of the pre-judging right here. Once again, guys, stay tuned, subscribe. All right, next up, at three weeks out of Vancouver Pro Show, we have a physique update from Hassan Mustafa. And as you can see, his conditioning uh, didn't change much from Toronto Pro. I mean... I don't know, maybe slightly, but it's definitely not ready, not close to being ready. He definitely needs to be a lot more conditioned. Now, as you can see, the top comment here with 20 likes says, Dude, please retire and don't steal from the time that you can spend with your family. And as you can see, this is the top comment, but I don't necessarily agree with this. I think the only reason why Hassan is not doing that well that he plays sixth at a Toronto Pro is simply conditioning he doesn't need to retire i mean he doesn't have any visible injuries i don't think there's anything really wrong with his physique i think it's only conditioning he needs to do more cardio or eat less i don't know what he was doing so far but that's the only thing really he just needs to be more serious about getting his condition getting his body fat percent lower now as you can see right here i mean it's okay, I guess, for three weeks out. If he truly pushes things now until Vancouver Pro, he can get lean enough, I think. Lean enough to win that show, to beat John Jewett, who plays third, three spots ahead of Hassan Mustafa. I'm not sure who else might jump in. Maybe Quinton Raya, maybe some other top guys. I'm not sure at this point, but, you know, he won really big shows before, Hassan, you know, and he can look really good. He's a mass monster. He's really freaking big. It's all about conditioning, so he needs to push it seriously, push it hard, and truly get ripped. And the thing is, like, from the front, he can look decent, but he's not showing us his back and his uh, lower body from behind. You know, those glutes are holding a lot of fat and a lot of water, usually the back, the lower back as well, hamstrings. So we don't see the trouble areas here, but even in his uh, Toronto Pro updates, he looked relatively decent from the front. Maybe his legs looked a little bit worse, so I can base the progression from the quads. You know, quads are looking a little bit drier, but I don't think this is enough. I think he needs to be really dry, really crispy from the front in order for his glutes to be decent. So, is three weeks enough for this guy to get in condition? Well, it could be if he was, you know, eating a lot and if he wasn't doing a lot of cardio. And if he changes that, let's say maybe introduces some fat burners that he wasn't introducing before, then sure, three weeks is enough. But... Maybe he was already redlining it before the Toronto Pro. Maybe he was really trying to get in condition, but his body wouldn't let him. And in that case, three weeks is not going to be enough. In that case, he would need to restart his metabolism, you know, start eating more and then diet a little bit later. But I don't know what is the case uh, as far as like three weeks out, this conditioning is okay. Theoretically, in perfect conditions, he can get lean enough not super shredded, not really peeled, you know what I mean? But he can get lean enough, and with his muscle, he can potentially win a pro show and qualify for the Mr. Olympia once again. But this is not the best of Hassan Mustafa that we've seen lately. He needs to get more serious. He needs to be really serious about conditioning because, you know, this is not professional. This is not okay. Showing up the way he showed up at Toronto Pro, it was like, you know, it wasn't just him being off like Krizo was at the Ampro Cup. No, no, he showed up fat, basically. He was in 10 weeks out conditioning, and that's not okay. That's definitely not cool. He was criticized a lot, and he deserved to be. So hopefully he can fix this, change it, and actually be presentable and ready for the stage come Vancouver Pro. What do you guys think? Tell me down below. We also got a physique update from Keon Pearson at 16 weeks out. So we are definitely getting closer to the Mr. Olympia. Those 16 weeks are going to fly by and we're going to see these guys on that stage. Now, as far as Keon Pearson, man, what a freaking physique. What a freaking X-frame. This is nuts. You know, for a guy who is a bodybuilder, you know, 212 bodybuilder, who has this kind of a small waist? 
nobody, nobody as far as the top open or top 212 guys. This is really rare. He has that diastasis, that separation of the abs in the middle, but he has a really good vacuum and it really looks good on him, so he can hide it perfectly. The waist looks super tiny, man. I mean, his waist is literally the size of his legs. And his legs also got bigger. And those lats are popping out like crazy. Arms are massive. I think he made some solid progress in the offseason. And he's actually leaner now. So I guess he started his prep some weeks ago. And I'm also under the impression, I'm not sure if this is 100% true, but I think he's going very lightly about his uh, gear in the offseason. And then he ups things as he gets closer to the show. So as he diets down, I don't think he's gonna lose any of this size. If anything, he's gonna get bigger. I mean, he's gonna get leaner and harder, and the illusion is gonna be that he's bigger, that he's better. So if he looks like this right now, I think we're gonna see something absolutely ridiculous at a Mr. Olympia stage this year, and maybe it's gonna be the time he decides to switch to the Open. I mean, Derek won the Mr. Olympia in 2012 once, and he switched to the Open, and two years later he won the Open Olympia as well. Can Kion Pearson do something like this? I don't see why not. I think he is structurally even more blessed than Derek Lunsford. But I think he's not big enough. I mean, Derek was really struggling to make the weight for, for 2012, and Kion, I think he has more room. So in a couple of years, that switch will probably happen when he actually starts struggling to make the weight and has to actually lose muscle to get in the 212 division. So when that happens, I think he's going to switch to the Open and he's going to do great in the Open. How good can he do? I mean, can he be top three next to Hardy and Derek? I think it's very much possible. Why not? What do you guys think? Tell me down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. For more content like this, subscribe to this channel once again. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon, guys. All the best and bye-bye.